The first thing to say is that for any one given sport, and particularly an individual and their body type in the context of that sport, there's going to be a range that is close to the optimum amount of muscle and body weight they can hold and be their best at that sport. And it's the case in every sport. Even in bodybuilding, you can have some muscle groups that get so big they actually throw off your symmetry, and then people are like, "Stop training your calves! This is starting to look absurd." You know, one of those things. So, if you get out of that range, everything you do to try to continue to get better at sport is a band aid over a gaping wound. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. if I want to be the best golfer I can be, the fun fact: I actually can't physically golf because my pecs are big enough that I can't extend my <laughs> elbows completely and simultaneously grab a golf club. It's dope problem to have, but makes me an ineligible for golf. And when I was a kid, I used to play tennis, um, and I, I'm actually decent at tennis, but uh, I can no longer have a two-handed backhand because it's again same problem, right? So now I have to have a backhand slice, and this is not the same. So yeah. there are hard limits to this kind of thing, first of all. Most There's, people probably don't have to worry about that. Most people much. don't but have yeah, to worry it, it, about that. The limit the limit does exist. <laughs> right. But but in hockey, you might have had to worry about that because it's a power to weight ratio sport. And you might have gotten heavy enough to where, yeah. no, you weren't as fast and nimble on your skates as you used to be. And like, look, guys that are smaller, more nimble, and they're quicker. It's just a fact of physics. So power to weight ratio is a big deal. Fundamental flexibility is a big deal. Fatigue ability is a big deal. Big muscles get tired when you use them, and uh, if you're really jacked, you can use your muscles a ton. You can like take a couple slap shots in the the first period in hockey and just fucking rip the net open, kill the goalie, whatever the fuck, hit someone and their head pops off. But hockey is a game that requires you to continue to be on your skates and skate for quite some time, and like you might be just a total stud in the first five minutes, but then you're so jacked, you get tired, and just because you're just carrying too much body weight. It of course applies to body fat, but also can apply to muscle at the extremes. So that's something we have to say first to understand that anytime I'm asked questions like how can I marry these two things together, we have to understand that specificity is always and everywhere king. If Gordon Ryan wants to be the best jujitsu practitioner possible, he has to philosophically completely eliminate the concern for aesthetics in his mind. Completely. Because everything that he should be doing is to optimize his, to turn himself into a jujitsu machine. Fuck aesthetics. Totally. That being said, if you want to have a bit of both, let's put it a different way. If you want to get jacked and lean and look good, but you don't want to suck total dick at the sport you love to play for fun and maybe a little, even a little competitively, there are a couple of things I can say to that. One, make sure that anytime you enter mobility or flexibility limitations, make sure that you back up off of making that muscle bigger or start a little bit more mobility work, pay attention to that so that you can still hit the positions of your sport. As soon as you can't hit the positions, there's no saving you because your game is going down the drain. Another one is continue to practice your sport and uh, your body will actually learn how to use your new, more jacked, leaner version to better ends, but it can take a while. It can take some number of months and even years to optimize yourself. So I have, I have a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm not anywhere near Gordon Ryan's level. He would walk through me like I'm not even there, but like I'm pretty decent. And the way I'm decent is I am like 235, five foot six. So like I don't have long leverages. I'm not doing any kind of flying fucking triangles and some shit like that, but I've got a, a game that's tailored to my size. And so I have a game that's uh, takedown based because I'm already so short. I'm at your legs already, motherfucker. I do. Uh, I, do you, you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well? I do. Yeah. yeah. How'd you know it? Awesome. Oh, because of Gordon. Yeah. I, I assumed you weren't just like a, one of his visiting pool boys and that's how you yeah, know right. him. Although yeah, that would sure. be so much fun. Um, yeah, hurt me like one of your Jiu Jitsu competitors. I'm done. Yeah, I swear so to God. Uh, yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> it don't really hurt me. You know, hurt me emotionally. That's what I want. So yeah, cool. um, cool. I have like a deep half game, right? And in deep half, if you're a tiny little ball, people are like, God damn it, how the fuck am I three feet in the air when you're just under me? So, you know, I'm not trying to do any kind of stuff that doesn't match my physique because I, when I entered jiu-jitsu, I was already really the, roughly the size and strength. I adapted my jiu-jitsu game fluidly. But if you are slowly over time, you already had a good jiu-jitsu game and you started to get much more jacked, you're going to have to wiggle with your game. Like you might not be in, you might not be inverting anymore. You might not be doing X guard as much anymore because you just can't get into those positions as effectively. However, in a sport like jiu-jitsu, you have new weapons now. 
uh, Gordon Ryan is really good because he's technically in- incredible, and and he has through his coach John Donaher and his own uh, deep intellect a completely systematized tactical approach to jujitsu. I could talk about this till I'm blue in the face, but um, he is an unreal game plan, which he's threaded through so much that when you're going against Gordon Ryan, you're in his court, you're going against his game. And when you're going against his game, he's practiced it a thousand times and you've practiced defending it a hundred. He's a 10 to one advantage on you. But also Gordon Ryan is fucking strong because his muscles are so big because big muscles are strong. So when he, pushes his position on you when he grip controls you, when he passes, when he smashes, when he's in a bad position, needs to push out. It's just a fucking like you've rolled with strong guys. You get a white belt that is 280 and has big traps and it's his first day. No, none of the black belts want to roll with him. Like the fuck that guy, man. He's going to get me hurt. Of course, as a black belt, you're going to beat his ass, but it's going to be annoying. Right, uh, strength is fucking annoying at least, and at best, particularly if they have experience with wrestling, then it's like nobody wants a shot at that. Like, oh, nobody I did a little D one, like, and you're like, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna start. You're gonna start in my guard. That's how we're gonna start this. Yeah. So, uh, so in any case, I'm gonna start on your back, right? Uh, he, and as a wrestler, he's like, okay, great. You're like, okay, he said great. That's not yeah. good. <laughs> so, uh, so in any case, um, muscle size is the most fundamental component of strength. And strength allows you to impose forces on your opponent. There are two components of how you win in jujitsu. It is the targeting of where you're putting your force. Like, do you slide your hand under the right part of the chin or do you slide it here? Nothing happens. And multiply that by how much force you can impose on someone. Because like total respect, if you're going up against a world ranked hundred pound female jujitsu competitor, you know, you can just muscle out of a lot of stuff. Like she yeah. loops her triangle and you're like, snap, fuck out of here, bitch. Are you crazy? Cause strength matters and her positioning is flawless, but like this is the real world we're talking about here. So Gordon Ryan can be incredible because of his muscle and strength, not in spite or despite of it. Now, if he had to optimize his training in the weight room for jujitsu, I would certainly have, have some suggestions for him that could allow him to do a lot of bodybuilding and still look as jack as he does now, even maybe more jacked, but the kind of movements he would be doing would be less bodybuilding and more things that look like weightlifting and powerlifting, the kind of movements, whole body, big, explosive, gnarly movements that replicate more like what you would see in jujitsu. And then he would put on even more hurting power onto people. Thank you.